how do we market our business during a national or international disaster? Um, while I'm recording this, um, there has recently been the Turkey Syria earthquake, which has, I think, the death toll is uh, at least 33,000 people at this point. It's incredible. I mean, I hope this is a once in a lifetime kind of situation. And um, naturally, uh, everybody in the world is concerned about this. Everybody in the world is, so many people are trying to give back. And that's been, um, you know, the, the hopefully, you know, understandably, the, 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 a lot on social media, right, posts about this. And what I hear sometimes is certain people who uh, believe in ethical business, ethical marketing, and they put out these rules. And I've heard of rules like ethical marketing during a disaster. And by the way, I'm in the United States. We have, sadly, mass shootings police brutality that happen multiple times a year, right? Like, how do I deal with this? Like, you know, and, and so the ethical marketing, some ethical marketing people give us the rules. Like, number one, do not say anything about your business. Number two, only talk about the, the event and how you're giving back. And number three, put a black square on as your profile photo or some kind of um, solidarity uh, profile image. Um, and to me, I am natural rebel. I don't like rules. I don't like bureaucracy. And every time I see someone say, you must do this, I'm like, sorry, but I don't agree. I, 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 think, I think you're being too harsh. You're being too authoritarian. Might you even say, it's so ironic. Some people who don't like authoritarianism are very authoritarian. And I, I could be that sometimes too, right? Talk about no funnels or no, I always talk about rebels. You're always welcome to rebel against my teachings. I welcome rebels because I like to be challenged. I like to grow and learn. And so I don't like people following the rules and go, well, I'm supposed to do this because it's the right etiquette right now, even if they, unless they feel authentic for it. If, they, if it comes out of you authentically, wonderful. Do the black square, do the stop your talking about your business. But I, I think also for a lot of us, and this is this is true compassion for small business owners, a lot of us can't stop marketing our business because we won't have enough business to survive. We won't have enough income to pay the rent. What are you going to, oh, mass shooting. Okay, I'm going to stop um, promoting my launch for the next two weeks and therefore have, you know, no, nobody show up to my course and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. You know, it's like the mass shooting not only destroyed a lot of people's lives, but also destroyed my business for, for a quarter or something like that. It's like, no, I, I feel more compassion towards, well, because those are my people. I feel compassion towards my small business owners. Like, so, so you know what I do now? I know what I do isn't ideal, but it's authentic to me. And you have to sense out, I'm just giving you another example, in other words, and I'm just giving you these two examples, right? One example is Follow these rules, black square or whatever solidarity profile image or, or, or band on your profile image, you know, in support of, you know, whatever. You can do that if you want, you, you know, stop, you know, only post about how, how you're giving back on. To me, to me, all right, again, this is my opinion. I don't know what's virtue signaling and what's real. That's my problem. Like, I'm like, when I see people do this stuff, I'm like, sure, I could do that too, but I don't feel authentic when I do that. I mourn privately. I don't mourn publicly. That's just my style, right? You don't see me posting about the turkey seer. It's not that I don't have a heart. I'm crying privately. And I'm like, it's devastating to me. But I don't go out and go, well, I'm, and like I said, some of you do it publicly and it's natural and authentic to you and you do it. You do you. For me, if I were to do it, it would feel to me like virtue signaling. That's how it would feel to me. And I'm not judging others who do it. Because I don't know whether, <laughs> but some people I kind of feel like maybe I'm being too judgmental, but there's some marketers, right? Some marketers in my industry. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you really feel that or if you're doing this because it's good for your business to do so. To, 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 you know, like during the Black, Black Lives Matter, right? It was really big. Everyone, you know, not everyone, but all the smart, smart marketers had the black square and everything. I'm like, I feel it too. I'm in San Francisco. I mean, I'm in California. Of course I feel it. Right. Of course, I'm in solidarity, but I do that stuff privately, you know, um, so uh, but I know everyone's like, no, you should do it publicly and in solidarity, get the message out there and all that. Stuff. I know, I know, I know there's many reasons to do it publicly, but for some of us, it's more authentic to do it privately and you should respect us for that. Right. So um, 
if you have true compassion, right? So, so that's what I say. And, and so I don't believe in following those rules. Look what I do. I just continue marketing my business like nothing happened. I know it's not ideal for my public image. People I'm sure are judging me and going, George, you have, you have no heart. You're not championing the cause, whatever cause, Black Lives Matter, climate change, systemic injustice, um, Turkey, Syria, Ukraine. I did not publicly champion any of those causes. Not because I don't care about them. Of course I do. I read about them more than you think, you know, and I talk to friends about them more than you think. And I, anyway, I, but I don't talk about it publicly. I just continue my business. And you also notice that other people do the same thing too. So yes, there are others who also continue just marketing themselves, doing their regular content, like nothing happened, even though, but we don't know if they're mourning or, or doing other things privately, not in the public eye, at least not on a social media channel. If, you, if it's natural to you, if it feels right to do it, then do it, then do it. But I don't think it should be a blanket, you must do this or otherwise you're not a good person kind of a, kind of a thing. So I hope that my example will be one extreme for you. They say, oh, that's possible too. And of course, there's the other extreme of I'm going to shut down my business for two months, you know, and only talk about the talk about the cause, which like I said, both I think are applicable if it's done authentically. So I hope this is helpful. And let's say that you do have a program or service that's related to the healing that's going on in your cultural space, in your national space. Um, remember that it is a resource for people. Sure, there is a there is a price attached to it because it's part of your business. But any product or service that is a, has a positive transformational effect, in my opinion, <clears throat> is either worth paying for or is worth donating to uh, or is worth giving back to in some way, right? Like, um, and so you might, if you wanted to do some kind of healing experience, again, related to your expertise or some transformational thing that's related, um, there's a couple ideas. One, um, you know, some people are already doing this, like, hey, I'm launching this course and part of the proceeds are going to go to support this cause. I think it's very common to do, right? But if you had a program or service that literally helps people heal from this situation, then you could say, I'm doing this program because I really believe I really believe in the power of this kind of healing or transformation or process um, to to trans to uh, yeah for the benefit of of of, of the situation, and I I um, because it's part of my business there is a fee attached to it, and here's where you may because of the situation you may want to play with pay from the heart kind of model or some kind of sliding scale or a donation based model. Um, or you could do the kind of thing that I usually do, which is free to attend paid recording kind of experience. It's like, like if you attend, it's free. If you cannot attend, you can buy it as a nominal price later, maybe even as a, you know, as a donation or part of the, do go, go to the campaign. Because at the end of the day, when you have people interact with you in a program, they're more likely to continue working with you in some way. Um, of course, people don't expect... People have various kinds of expectations for what can be paid, what you can, right? What can be sliding scale. When they're working with you one-to-one, -one, they know they're taking the most time and energy from you. And it's least reasonable to say, well, sure, I can do it for free because during a natural disaster or sure, I'm doing pay because it's my livelihood. But when it's a group situation, people have a bit more expectation that there's a bit more of a flexibility with, with the pricing. So I hope this is helpful. And if you have any other thoughts uh, about how someone might market their program or business during a crisis or during a cultural moment that needs healing, please comment below and give us your examples if you'd like.